Hello everyone, I'm going to do a video on how to build a thermoelectric generator. And what I'm using is these TEC 1 12706. This is a thermoelectric coolers. It's called a Peltier, and how they work is by the C effect. You apply cold to one side and warm to the other side, and what it does, it'll Generate electricity. Let's get started. I watched a few videos and kind of got some ideas. Thought I'd try it myself, so I went and bought some things. I kind of got it set up. Just got started doing it, but this is what I have done so far. I wanted to show you what I've done before I get too far ahead, but so you can try it yourself if you want. Went and bought ten of these thermoelectric coolers. There's different types. You can buy the thermoelectric generators, which are a lot better, but they're a lot more expensive. Um, these were five for fifteen dollars. I got them off eBay, and I'm gonna try ten of them. Putting ten of them, they fit perfectly on one of these cake pans that I bought at Walmart. It's a nine-inch cake pan for uh, ninety-two cents a piece. So there's a couple more dollars. So far what I've done is I put this, I have some square pieces of aluminum here, about an eighth inch thick. Um, I wanted to raise that up a little bit to keep the wires from being too close to the heat source. This is going to be my heat source down below to warm up the bottom. So I took some of this compound that I bought at Radio Shack. It's a thermal compound. That was about 10 bucks for that. I put a little dab on on the aluminum in the center and around the edges and then I push that on so I could get a little more height to get that away from the heat source the wires otherwise this would be touching the heat source the wires would be so there's different types of this compound you know they call it uh, CPU paste thermal compound There's some types that have silver in it, and that's the real expensive. This one is just, uh, I think it has ceramic and aluminum in it. So it'll help transfer that heat to the thermoelectric coolers a little better. You know, there's, you can get it on eBay and probably buy it cheaper, but I just went to Radio Shack. So what I've done so far is just laid out my thermoelectric coolers to see how many I can fit on a on this pan and I can fit 10. They come with longer wires, so what I did is cut them. And I'm wiring this in series. Here's where I'm starting. They don't these don't put out an awful lot of voltage so I'm going to wire them in series to add the voltage we'll see what it does when I'm done but I was guessing maybe a half a volt so we got 10 of them so maybe I'll get to 5 volts I wanted to see if I could charge a cell phone 
without a lot of heat. The thermoelectric generator type can handle a lot more heat and they're a lot better, but I wanted to see what I could do with the cheap Chinese thermoelectric coolers. So what we've done so far, we start, this will be my positive, and we come in and wire it in series. Negative to positive, negative to positive. We're going to come up around negative to positive. Negative, positive, negative, positive, all the way around. And to the opposite end, we'll have our negative. So this will be my negative. And then the opposite corner will be my positive. Wired in series, hopefully to get about 5 volts. I have it laid out now. What I'm going to do now is solder all these joints. And then I'm going to coat them all with some uh, liquid electrical tape. I also bought one of these, came all the way from China. I was wondering if it would come. I ordered it off eBay. It was a dollar. It's called a uh, 9 to 5 volt to 5 volt DC DC booster module USB. So I'll be able to plug my phone into this. I didn't know if I'd be able to get enough. So what this does if you're under 5 volts it'll raise it up and try to regulate it to 5 volts which is what most cell phones use took about two weeks to get this but I was I've never bought anything on eBay from China I was wondering if it would even come and it did come so don't be afraid to try to order something from China I also went ahead and bought a little fan in case I could run this. It's a 5 volt fan. It was like 5 bucks off of eBay. In case I can run this and charge my phone at the same time, this could cool off the top portion of my uh, thermoelectric cooler that I'm building. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm going to try it. I bought some... Uh, high temp silicone sealant that's what I'm going to use after I get this soldered and set up to go around all the edges underneath the wires to insulate these wires and kind of keep the heat isolated to just the thermoelectric coolers I'll show you what I'm going to do as I go along but this is kind of just an experiment. See what happens with 10 thermoelectric coolers. We'll see what we can get out of it. Okay, I got all my solder connections soldered except for on the ends. I left them off because it'll be easier to put my uh, thermal compound down to and then I'll put the wires and plus I can move them around where I want them before I actually put my end wires on. Uh, make sure you test them as you're going. I did burn, got one of them too hot. And I burned it up so I had to take it apart. But we got all the connections soldered right now. Now, we're, now what I'm going to do is coat all these connections with uh, liquid electric tape. Okay, here's what I use for that. Uh, just liquid, liquid tape for electrical. And I flipped them over, coated them, flipped them over again, coated them. So that'll seal the connections up. Got that done now. I'll let that set and I'll use my thermal compound to mount them onto the cake pan. Okay, so what I've done is I put the thermal paste on, the back, flipped them over, put it on. I just dabbed it on very liberally. I'm probably not doing that right, but I'm basically using this to help transfer the heat and to 
kind of get the initial bond to hold these things down to the cake plate. So now I'll flip them over and bond them down. Okay, I got everything set where I want it. Kind of holds them in place. Yeah, flip them over and then kind of move them back and forth, twist them around to get that paste nice and even on the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through with this uh, high temp sealant and I'm going to try to get a little bit under each of these uh, wires. Get that and then in between around the coolers around all the coolers to kind of and let that set up to give it an initial set to hold, so they'll hold down in place a little better but and then I'm going to go ahead and um, mess with these, connect these end wires here. But I wanted to get this initial set, so I'll do that now. Okay, as you can see, we filled in with the high temp sealant. I got underneath all these wires really well. Leave it low. You don't want it to be high because if you come up, if you get any on the coolers wipe it all off so it's nice and clean you don't want any high spots because we're going to put this cake pan on top and that has to sit real flat so we'll let this set up for about 24 hours now then we'll come back wire up the rest of it my ends fill in anything that I feel like I want to fill in then we'll put the top on Okay, I got all my ends connected now and I filled up underneath. This high temp sealant only takes a couple hours to get its initial set, so it dries pretty quick. Fully cured, it takes 24 hours. But One thing I forgot to talk about, uh, you want to make sure you get these the right way. There's a hot side and a cold side. You want to have them all the same way. On this, the the bottom, so my heat will be coming in the bottom here, so the bottom is the warm side. You can just hook a voltmeter to it. Um, I got one hooked up right now to the wires just to test it before I finish here. Um, you can see, I'll put my hand on top of it, set zero. You can see the voltage going up because my hand's warmer. It's a negative volt, so you know this top side is the cold side. When you put heat underneath, you want it to be a positive voltage. So we know all the wires are working now. They're all connected and everything's working so we can finish up. this. You could use an aluminum pan too on top. That conducts heat a lot better or transfers heat but this is just a metal cheap pan I'm going to use this um, we want to make sure these are real clean on top because we want good contact and we'll have a good layer of that the thermal paste on before we put the top on but I'm just going to put the top on and then seal up around this edge with that high temp sealant I'm just going to pump that full and hope that holds together Seems like it's sticking pretty good. But. The bottom side, I wasn't too worried using a cheap metal pan because these can't, these thermal coolers can't take a lot of heat. So, but on top, you want a real good contact. You want those pans to be nice and flat so it gets good contact with every one of these. Thermal electric coolers. Oh, on these uh, particular coolers, there's a stamp on one side, and then there's no stamp on the other side. So, once you figure out one, which is the cold and hot side, the stamps, at least on these particular ones, were all the cold side, the one that had the stamp on it. Okay, so what I did next, I took my thermal paste, I put a thin bead across the top, and then I used a credit card and scraped it, 
tight and left a thin layer. And I put my cool, my top cooling pan on top and I pushed it down real tight, let it sit for a little bit. Also what I did is I took my wires. This is flipped upside, this is the hot side here and I flipped it upside down and ran my wires tight to the cool pan and around my positive and then I met in the middle took my negative and positive and met in the middle here with aluminum tape and just kind of nicely taped it around the top edge so we'll flip it back now the hot sides on the bottom and we got my cool side on top with my wires up high to the cool side now next I'm just going to take my my uh, silicone sealant my high temp and I'm going to fill in this gap around the whole thing to hold that top on it's kind of stuck right now just with the thermal paste but we'll do that now put the sealant in Okay, I pumped that full with the sealant. We're all done. Now we'll do some testing. Let her set overnight and we'll test it, see what it'll do. I just set something on top so it holds it down. Okay everyone, I'm going to do a just an initial test. One test here in this video. I'm already 16 minutes. But I'll do this test. It's real promising what I've got going here. What I did was I hooked up this uh, USB booster module. And I hooked up two voltage meters. One before the module and then one after the module as you can see I have that one voltage meter into the USB and then one onto the wires before so just keep in mind the one on the yellow one the yellow voltage meter is the one before it gets through the USB module and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I have a gel pack I have no heat source at all yet underneath it I just have this ice cold gel pack here I'm going to set that in and I will let you watch the voltage meters here we go they're both about the same right now once that gets up to 0.9 volts it's regulating it to the 5.08 which is enough to charge a cell phone right now it's putting out 1.5 volts just and this was just is just with an ice pack in it almost two almost two volts with no heat source at all just an ice pack on top so there we have it I'll be uh, doing a second video with this I'll be doing just all testing and different ways how many volts we can get I think it's going to be really interesting anyway thanks for watching everyone I'll pull this ice pack out. Watch it go down, maybe. Pulled the ice pack out, and we're still it's at 0.8 on the right before, and still regulating it to 5.02. Now it's dropping. Once it gets down below a certain amount, then the, the left side drops after the module. Anyway. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be safe.